Here's my box of knives. Hello everyone, welcome to my kitchen, the room in the house where humans are known to prepare food. You can see by the refrigerator, the kettle and the loaf of bread that we are indeed humans who engage in such activities. Today we're looking at my box of knives. These are the EDC knives that I may pick from time to time to take out into the world and use in knife related jobs. So we're going to go through them one by one on the very professional YouTube knife reviewing mat. And I hope you find some interest in this. Hey, how's that, eh? You got a full-on knife reveal background. Busted it out. Let's go through what I've got in my little box. Um, starting with, here we go, this is a steel wheel modus. It's a cool little knife. M390 steel. Pretty sort of uh, standard size, three and a bit inches long blade, nice saber grind. A uh, bit of a story behind this one, uh, they sent me one that just had fudged heat treatment. And uh, Frank, one of my viewers, sent me this one to say, hey, check this one and see if it's uh, M390 for real. And it was for real because it cut for days. So it was very cool. Um, this is a great little knife, good budget entry with M390 steel. If you want great steel at a pretty reasonable cost, about 180 Aussie buckaroos, but I reckon under 100 US dollars for the steel wheel modus. I'll bring on the next knife so you can see and I'll sort of leapfrog them down. So next up is the SOG. What was this one called? The SOG Terminus XR. It's a bit of a smaller knife, as you can tell. Pretty strong design from SOG. I think this is a pretty good looking knife. Um, my review of this was a little bit critical of the steel choice because the standard terminus is in BDZ1. And this one's in BDZ1. BDZ1. So BD1 and BDZ1. And that does mean something. There's a considerable less amount of carbon in this steel. And I found it rusts and doesn't hold an edge for a great deal of time at all. But the design is on point. The deep carry pocket clip is nice. And I like the little axis lock type thing. And it's also quite a good flipper. The only other thing I remember was that this is a little bit sharp here for my big old fat index finger, which is probably just fat from doing all my edge tests, which is probably my fault entirely. That's the Terminus XR. Moving down the pack, let's bring out next the Almar Falcon. What a classic knife. This is the ultralight version. Expensive for AUS8 in my carter, but I just love the aesthetic of this little blade. Like a little steak knife. Wonderful, thin, ultra low profile in the pocket. Just classy and not imposing, just a really gentle daily carry that you could really have and not really notice at all until you needed it. So great little cutter, not for your super heavy jobs, but then again, I haven't had it fail on me, so maybe it is. No, I kid, but a great little food knife, um, odd jobs knife for sure. Moving on, we've got the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. So that's the um, eponymous knife of the knife world, I would say. Everyone's either got one or has a strong opinion on why they don't have one. Um, I like it enough. I probably don't really carry it. I keep it mainly as a comparison piece. And also for it as a testing mule for the very cool S110V steel. Currently sporting a mirror polished edge. Very, very nice indeed. Um, it's a really excellent knife and it's really well built in gold in Colorado, but a couple of things uh, generally keep me from carrying it. Usually the clip, this whole end is just a little bit too much for my pockets usually. I usually carry something a little bit less um, uh, bulky in terms of just this part in my pocket. I like to carry a mobile phone next to my knives and um, unless it does something really special for me, I'll generally keep, you know, carry something about this size. Uh, that being said, I do have bigger knives that I do carry all the time because I like them more. So anyway, Paramilitary 2 in the 110V, very, very nice knife to be sure. But you know, just not one of my favorites. Uh, something I like probably more than the Paramilitary 2 is the Spyderco Advocate. It uh, just feels a little bit nicer. Has a bit of a nerdier steel, which is something that really speaks to me. I love the M4, the performance you can get out of M4. Um, just that crazy fine cutting edge. The edge retention is about on point, but you know, with, uh, you know when, you've, when you're in a real niche hobbyist like I am, you have all sorts of just gut reasons why you like things that aren't exactly quantifiable. And there we go. Um, good, comfortable knife in hand. Gary Bradley knows how to make a handle for sure. He is 
very, very nice at sculpting them around the human hand. So good on him. Uh, a good uh, cutting knife, a good slicing knife, uh, robust enough to use for your larger jobs. The Advocate is a win for sure. Expensive though, titanium, orange pill texturing, M4 steel, ball bearings on the new pivot system. Good job, well played. Uh, next up is the Benchmade 940. This was one of my grail knives. I'd wanted one of these ever since I saw Wrangler Star making videos with his. I mean, I'm easily influenced just like everyone else's. Um, and yeah, I got one in green originally and I liked it a whole bunch. I sold that to a friend who wanted it more than I did. And I did have my eye on this G10 model, which I think I do prefer in the hand. That being said, I think I prefer the looks of the green aluminium one. I don't know why, but it is. It's a really chunky sort of hard utility blade that you can get a very sharp edge on, but you might have to take back a fair way like I have to get it really properly slicey slicey. But regardless, even with the factory edge, perfectly adequate cutter and a no-nonsense EDC staple. Again, pricey though. Moving on, we've got the Spyderco Caribbean. This is a 100% stainless knife, a knife really built to be quite rugged and built for adventure. A, what a, a fantastic marine knife to take on a boat with you, fishing, to take on a kayak with you as your camp knife for the, you know, unless you're, unless you're doing stuff that requires a non-locking blade, and by that I mean a fixed blade, this is something that I think would really serve you well. The steel is impervious to um, most elements as I've found, I've tested it quite extensively. Got nary a hint of rust from it. Uh, G10 handles the same steel in the blade is used to make the liners, um, the titanium backspaces and pocket clip. Everything is very, very solid indeed. So um, no, you're not gonna have any problems with this. Uh, the only thing is it's pretty ugly. So it's just something you have to get your head around uh, on the way out. But um, I quite like it. It's a bit bulky for me to carry every day. That's for sure though. Uh, moving on, we've got this little, look at this little fella. This is the Buck Vantage Pro. Small version, I guess you'd call it, and geez, is it small. Uh, I got this as a testing bed for the uh, Boss S30V still, and yes, I did find that it holds its edge longer than other brands' S30V, so they are doing something right there at Buck and at Boss Heat Treating. Uh, this is a little flipper knife, just a little bit small for my hands, actually a lot small for my hands, about the same size as a mini grip tillion, but with a more uh, abruptly finishing handle, so it really does feel like a three-finger knife. Um, but yeah, it's definitely okay, um, but yeah, to be honest, I don't really carry it that much. Uh, next, we've got the Buck Marksman, continuing with Bucks, and this is definitely one of my favorites. Absolutely love the Marksman, 154cm steel, aluminium handle, deep carry clip. The uh, strap lock from the Hawks is a very cool lock. Hard to use when you're showing people how to use it, but quite natural when you're just playing with it on the couch. Uh, it's a good one. Uh, it's a, um, it holds, holds the blade in place by having the, uh, the tang wedged under this strap here when it's open. So to, follow, to force this nice knife closed, you will need to pull the strap forward, pulling out these two screws in the process. A pretty hard thing to do. Um, yeah, it's a great knife, tactical, I know, pretty intense looking, but it's just got that fidget factor and that overall quality that makes it a definite winner for me. Definitely in my top five, maybe even in my top three. Who knows? Kershaw Atmos is next. Click. Probably my favorite budget knife. Uh, I think the design is mainly the strongest point here. The steel is basic, the handle is basic, everything's pretty basic about it, but it has great action and it has a really well ground blade. A hollow ground blade, this cuts a whole lot better than even the fuller, fuller ZT version. Because of that hollow grind, and I've gone and put myself a nice tall convex edge on it. Um, uh, really, really interesting and it cuts really well without being frail or weak in any sense. Ultra light knife, deep carry, you know, definitely there with the Almar Falcon is something that uh, you have as a really enjoyable ultralight knife for sure. Moving those down, there you sit. Right away, we've got the American Lawman Classic Cedric and Ada Channel Knife. Still has a place in my heart. Doesn't get carried as often anymore. It's sort of been overshadowed a little bit by the, uh, the Caribbean. That's the knife I generally take if I wanted something harder use. Uh, but this is a fantastic hard use knife. I would say it's Cold Steel's answer to the paramilitary, as in they haven't bothered making it a fun, fancy mechanism, but it is strong and it is all around a great knife for pretty much anyone, I would say. I'm um, very, very happy with this one. Only thing you could, I'd improve is the pocket clip and this space here. I always go on about it, but uh, we. This space here gets crud caught in it sometimes. And it has actually happened on me where the knife has had something stuck in it when I've gone to close it. But apart from that, it's great. Let's move these down. Now, next we have, here we go, it's the Ontario Route 2 and D2. What more do you need to say about this knife? Not much. 
So moving down, we've got that one there. And then we've got, here it is, the new Sinkovic um, Zero Tolerance. This is the Zero 470. Currently still in the review process to sound like a complete wanker. Um, that is what I'm doing with it. I'm still working it out. <laughs> what, working it out? I feel like one of these tossers who stands in an art gallery staring at a picture for too long. But still, what I, because I'm really struggling to think of too many bads for this knife. And you know, I'm a bit hard on ZT sometimes for their general demeanor, but They've done pretty well with this knife. It's the lock is still not failing on me. Like it's still, still strong. Um, no issues at all. So I'm hoping this is a sign of good things because this was about the only thing they did this year that I liked. So the 0470, a really nice knife, updated version or you know modified super version of the Kershaw Atmos there. So there we are. Wonderful little knife though. Oh look, it's a Spyderco Delica. Another knife that no one is interested in hearing another word about, so I shan't waste your time. Yeah, move that down there. Great comparison piece though, I guess. Here's another one of my favorite budget knives, the Rake P801. Don't mind the grind, that is something I've done uh, just while I was fiddling around with the steel incessantly. Uh, it is a mess, but it is still a good knife, and it's a very, very good buy. 14C 28N steel, excellent flipping action, uh, great overall sort of um, get for someone who's not sure if they're into knives or not, that kind of knife. A great Christmas present for that, you know, cousin who might show up that you haven't seen since last Christmas when he surprisingly showed up and all you had to give him was beer. Get a couple of these, keep them in your house, and they are great impromptu gifts, for sure. Moving down there, here we are. Ah, A real favorite here, the uh, GEC Farm and Field Tool. The knife I'll carry when I really don't want anyone to know I have a knife. Just rolls around in the pocket at the bottom, and I'll get it out and it'll be all like, what this? Oh, I guess it's a knife, but it's really just like your grand, you know, it's really just a grandpa tool. We'll give them all that sort of shtick. And it's great, it's a real nice slicer, 1095 steel, honest and true, you know. <laughs> yeah, you could say a lot about these sort of old uh, patterns, but this one still definitely holds up. So definitely a great user still, simple handle, simple ergonomics. Everything about it is just simple from a, from a better time. Petridge Farm remembers all that sort of good stuff. Hey, look, it's the Keen by Mastrop and Ray Laconico. Could be my favorite new knife of the year. I think it may be, actually. Um, S35VN purple titanium handles. This one is getting some wear on it, that is for sure. But uh, that is why I like it. It's becoming my knife. And as a user, as well as something to look at and just buy along with all the other mass drop knives, it's excellent. Uh, really, really good ergonomics and overall practicality and a strong and well-designed package. So good game, Ray at Laconico and mass drop. Next we have, here we are, the Spyderco Capara. The Capara is another new Spyderco. A, a recent video of mine reviewed this in its entirety, so if you want to know more, go and check that. But place in my heart because a fellow Aussie has designed this one. The red back used to be called the custom version. Uh, all I think it needed was a bit more space cut out here for my big old fat index finger just to hold on to. It's not quite enough. And also a sharpening tool here would not have gone astray. But apart from that, it's probably Spyderco's best new knife. Since this knife, when this was new, the Shaman, what a great knife. And the pretty new one to the channel, Vinny Nero has sent this one to me. Thank you, Vinny. Um, I will pay you back in kind with a interesting trade. And um, this one is already definitely a me knife. Um, I haven't loosened it up at all. It's just kind of worn itself back in. Uh, he tightened it up for me to, you know, Australian customs are known for doing those shake tests sometimes and thinking that knives that just because they can flip are therefore automatic. So some genius is working in there, but um, this one is, you know, passed the test, came to my house and is absolutely well loved. And I'm definitely using it a whole lot. Uh, I've already put a couple of uh, rolls and flat points in the blade, using it to fix a fence of all things. Has them hard, hard use feels for sure. Speaking of Vianney Nero, this one going to old mate is this Sandron TCK. I'm going to send this your way, old bean. Um, this is the knife that cut all them times. A very, very interesting little product. It's more akin to like a razor blade or a scalpel than a traditional pocket knife, but has a clip, has handle, will knife. So good little gentleman's option for sure. You know, maybe something, if you're, if you're not happy in only spending $150 on the Yamaha Falcon, spend like 250 euros on this thing. What do you reckon, huh? 
Maybe not, but if you want to know, you have the longest lasting piece of cutting technology in your pocket, this is the knife to have. My friends, this is the knife to have. Uh, another great little staple of my collection, it's the Mantra number one. Mantra number one is an absolute home run. I really, really like it. It has everything the Delica does, as well as having an interesting steel in M4. Has ball bearings, has titanium. I believe the pivot got fixed, maybe. Uh, this one has the old pivot system, and really, it just needs a bit of lube from time to time, just like the rest of us. You know, it does okay. Uh, really great steel. As I said, Ergos of the Delica with uh, you know the fit and finish of a Tai Chung Spydeco. It's a great one. Uh, sometimes they go a bit wonky after a while, and that's just from the old washer system. So just be aware, buy a beware, but um, my one is absolutely great. And I was so disappointed to see that the uh, Mantra 3 went um, S30V and, and sticker carbon fiber. I just thought this is this was special, and the new one, I don't know, just seems less so. But hey, who knows? That's just what I think, a steel nerd. My opinions might not matter to you at all. And if they don't, why are you watching? Cut it out. Look, it's the first folding knife I ever got, like the first proper folding knife, Leatherman Crater C33, sharpened it to buggery, it's fine, it's you know, it's got a hideous clip, it's tipped down only, uh, not that that really matters to me lately, um, but yeah, it's got a carabiner in it as well, because Leatherman just has to put extra stuff on their knives, this is definitely getting worn out, but you know, it's always nice to see where you've started from, so the Crater C33, interesting to still have around and see how far the sickness has progressed. Lastly, my favorite knife at the moment, and probably for the foreseeable, is the Spyderco Spidey Chef. A real treat in the pocket, a treat to use. The steel is great, the handle is titanium. Another almost impervious knife, especially if you've got the new one with that ceramic detent ball. Well played if you do. This is an older one, I believe, and it's not causing me any issues whatsoever. I just love the thinness, I love the design the most. Uh, Sleesha's designs, they're just angular and it's just so uh, like, I just find them really artistic and modern and sleek. Just wonderful knives and this is just a, it's just a home run and it's my favourite knife. That's my EDC knife box, of course I have some other blades around the place. Um, yeah, I've got some, I think I've got a Gerber Easy out and the K-Bar Mule up in the shed, but I don't really carry those as everyday pieces. I've got, so I've got a whole drawer full of like Z Hunter type things as well just for a laugh. But that's my whole collection, my EDC stuff from day to day. How'd you like a big old photo of it all in the one frame? Let's do that, shall we? So there they all are, and me being a complete goose, I forgot the knife that was in my pocket pocket today, the Spyderco Dragonfly in ZDP 189. What a remarkable little knife. I don't think anyone's had one of these and hated it. Just such good little performance in such a good little package. And ZDP 89, 189, wonderful steel as well. I put that... There. <laughs> and here is the uh, Kaiser that I reviewed, no, the Rake that I reviewed a little while ago. This one here that, uh, yeah, whilst being a good knife, just that whole process was interesting little piece of development for me. Uh, I'm generally not doing the review samples model anymore from companies at least, sometimes from people, but generally not from companies. Just sort of, I'm gonna get the knives that, I, that are me. And this, look at it, it's not, a, it, it, whilst quality, it's not a me knife. So there we go. Anyway guys, that is the video. Those are me knives, all of them. Look at them. And I hope you've enjoyed. And I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye now.